Well, all I gotta say is if you need some serious help and John Wick is out of the country, better call Saul. So nobody tells the story of a retired government operative who fails to protect himself during a break-in, setting off a long simmering rage and putting him full force against a Russian mobster. Well, the first huge surprise of 2021 is here, everybody, in the name of nobody. Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad fans and throwback ultra-violent action fans meet up at the movie theaters to check out this kick-ass thrill ride. I might be letting the cat out of the bag very early, but I'm not gonna contain myself. I fucking loved this movie. First of all, I just love the genre itself or the subgenre of these old revenge action films. I mean, you get movies like Death Wish, you throw in John Wick, The Equalizer. This is a movie that fits very comfortably amongst those names and for me even rivals some of them. So starting off with the positives for Nobody, the first one, you gotta give credit where credit is due. Bob Odenkirk blew me away in this movie. If you would have told me a year ago, hell, six months ago, three months ago, that Better Call Saul is gonna be kicking ass in an action movie and making John Wick look like he might not be able to handle this guy, I would've been like, dude, no way. There's no amount of camera trickery that's gonna make that guy who is just a career comedian become this kick-ass, grizzled action star. It's just not gonna happen. But who's to say I didn't write the address down in, in my day planner? Well. It happened. Apparently the dude trained for like two years. He really wanted to take on this role, push his acting prowess to the biggest boundaries that he's ever done in his career. And I'm here to tell you, he does awesome all around through in this. He's intimidating. He still has some of that humor. We'll get into that a little bit. I could have used a bit more, but the action side of things, where he needed to prove himself in this movie with the physicality, with the stunt work and the choreography and being somebody that you could believe could walk into a room full of Russian mobsters and make them piss their pants, he nailed it. What are you still doing here, old man? I'm gonna fuck you up. And talking about the fighting, the stunt work, the choreography, it's awesome here. It's gonna get immediate comparisons to John Wick, but it's not exactly John Wick fighting. I would actually compare it more so to something like Jack Reacher. It's a little bit more brutal hand-to-hand, -hand. not really any of the really quick ultra technical gun fu thing that's going on in John Wick. I understand the comparison, fast fighting, that's the easiest thing that we have to compare it to recently, but it's different. It feels more brutal. It feels more like you can feel each punch. I mean, even Bob Odenkirk's character himself is getting his ass kicked along with everybody else. It's not like he's never getting hit in these fight scenes, so you almost feel like they're more real. It feels like there's a little bit more grounded sense to these fight scenes and there's multiple ones throughout here. Even the shooting scenes, even the car chase scenes. I mean, this basically has action scenes all around. Every single aspect that you would look for in a traditional action movie, it's here and it's done fucking well. I loved how the movie continuously escalated as well. I was a little bit worried when I saw the first trailer to this that the trailer was giving away all of the best parts of the movie, and I'm here to tell you it did not. It gives you a preview of some of them, but it doesn't even show you the best parts of those action sequences that it shows. And there's a lot more that the movie has to offer that wasn't even in the trailer. So the whole time I'm watching the film, I kept getting the feeling that this badass action scene that I just watched was probably the peak of the movie, and from here it's all downhill. And then the next sequence would come 15 minutes later and top the one that I just saw. 15 minutes later, topping that one. And towards the end of the movie, this huge action, bullet, bloody extravaganza with all of the main characters. I was like, holy shit, the movie just keeps going, keeps building, and man, do I have a big old smile on my face. What can I say? I love violence. Just, it just, I don't know, it just touches me right here. There was even a few surprises along the way with some side characters that I didn't expect to get on in the action that were there and just made the action sequence that much more fun that they were there. I mean, when you have Doc Brown carrying around a shotgun, mowing dudes down, I'm like, hell yes, I did not know I needed that in my life, but damn it, I needed that in my life. I was also impressed with the creativity the movie had. Like, we've seen a dime a dozen movies that end in some kind of a siege or some kind of a Home Alone-esque type scenario where there's gonna be a bunch of traps. I mean, movies like Equalizer, movies like Rambo Last Blood, we've seen them even recently where it ends up in that type of a climax. And I was impressed at how creative this movie got with 
taking that in different directions, you know, showing traps, showing utilizations of grenades and shotguns and rebar and all this stuff in new ways that I had not seen them before. These action sequences would still be badass if they even were a little bit, you know, familiar, even if they were doing some things that we'd seen before, but the fact that they went the extra mile and was trying to do something a little bit different, it makes it that much more fun when you're seeing people getting taken out in all of these new bloody ways. And finally, the movie does maintain a really nice sense of humor throughout. It never takes itself too seriously. It doesn't have like this really grounded, ultra stoic tone to it. It's having fun along the way, both with the soundtrack, with, you know, even the way that some scenes play out, the way that it opens up where you're getting this Monday through fi Friday repetition of showing this guy's life where he keeps missing the, the trash day and just small little subtle things throughout the movie keeps this lighthearted tone throughout to where it kind of makes the action and the blood and the violence that much more effective because you kind of come up and down in your emotions as a viewer throughout this. It's not just ultra violence all the way through where you're just like in this dark place from start to finish. It does lighten it up throughout the runtime. I only have one mixed aspect in this and it's really just the fact that I kind of felt there was a bit of a missed opportunity to make Bob Odenkirk a bit funnier in this. I understand him being the character that he is and trying to break away from his, his typecast or what you would expect his character to be, that they wanted him to be a little bit more serious and have more of the, the situational humor and even have some of the side characters have a little bit more of the verbalized humor in the movie. But I feel like there was moments where you could have some good Bob Odenkirk, you know, Saul Goodman type humor in here where it wouldn't really take away that serious tone from his character. Not a huge complaint, honestly, like, it's this big. I love the movie to death, and it's it, even without that humor, it's awesome, but I could have used a little bit more of that classic Bob Odenkirk snark. Now, as far as the negatives, I will tell you right now, me personally, I don't have any negatives for this. The only negative that I'm going to acknowledge is that it's going to be a very easy shot to take at this movie, that it is very similar to a lot of other action movies like John Wick, like The Equalizer. We have seen, on paper, this type of plot multiple times. But you know, as a movie reviewer, sometimes you feel like you have to find things about movies that you have to point out, oh, they could have done this better, they could have done that better. And if you really want to pick apart a movie like this that's just trying to be a throwback, kick-ass little action thrill ride for 90 minutes, you could tear it apart left and right if you really wanted to. But I didn't want to. I watched this, it was everything I wanted it to be, it was more than I wanted it to be, and you know for a movie that is trying to put the bar right here and say, look, we're not trying to reinvent the action genre, we're not trying to start this whole new fight choreography craze like John Wick did, we're just trying to give you a kick-ass throwback action movie, and we delivered that. That is all I wanted from this movie, that is all that you should want from this movie, and if you want that, you're gonna get it in spades, and you're gonna love nobody. So all in all, guys, I had a blast with this. This was everything that I wanted it to be. This is one of my favorite subgenres. It seems to be a subgenre that's dying a bit. I mean, you get movies like John Wick that people love, and then you get movies like Death Wish that everybody hates, and I'm not comparing quality, but it seems to be a subgenre that just tears people apart with gun violence and pol politics and all this shit. I don't care about any of that. I just want to go and have a kick-ass fun time watching Bob Odenkirk fuck dudes up for 90 minutes, and that is exactly what this movie gave me. So I had a blast. You need to check it out. Support it while it's in theaters, please. Maybe we'll get a sequel out of this. It's going to be rough during the times that we're in, but go support nobody. If you thought it was going to be great, it's going to be great. Who the fuck are you? Me? I'm nobody. So if you love brutal throwback action movies, if you were curious what Bob Odenkirk could do in a role like this, go out immediately and see nobody in theaters. And whenever this hits the shelves, go out and buy it. So what do you guys think of Nobody? Were you a fan of this movie? Did you feel like it was better than John Wick or The Equalizer? Do you feel like it's a lesser movie than those? Where does it fit? Do you want to see a sequel to this? Do you want to see Bob Odenkirk wrap up Better Call Saul and become the next Liam Neeson? Let me know what your thoughts are on everything regarding this movie down in the comment section below, guys. Go out and support it. Please like and share this video. Support me by hitting that subscribe button and checking out all the rest of my reviews that's going to be coming out. Going to be wrapping up the Leprechaun series here in the next couple of days. Going to be talking about a lot of my favorite movies of all time over the next month. And then finally, wrapping up those Saw reviews in the beginning of May, right before Spyro comes out, you impatient little bastards. So hit that subscribe button to check out all of that fun, guys. Thank you, as always, for watching. And remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.